Hello all, my name is Krishnaik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, I'm going to start a new playlist on cloud computing and I'm going to include AWS first. And probably if you have demand for Microsoft Azure and all, I'll also be taking up as we proceed. Now, if you remember guys, some days back or some months back, I'd also uploaded a video or a playlist on AWS SageMaker. AWS SageMaker is a services that are provided from AWS where you can build ML and DL models and use it for your uh, problem statement for your business use cases. And again, remember, this is not a free service at all. Now, people may be thinking, Krish, do we have any free services and all? Yes, we definitely have free services. That basically means if you are a new customer and if you log in, if you create a new account, you know, in your in the AWS console, then what happens is that for one year, probably you'll be able to get some tire limits. There is something called as free tire with respect to S3 buckets, with respect to Lambda function, EC2 instance and many more things. Now, today I'll just not discuss about all the free tire things, but everything you can actually search for it in the Google itself. Like suppose if I search for AWS free tire S3 limits. So by default, you can see that upon sign up, a new AWS customer receives 5 GB of AWS or Amazon S3 standard storage, 20,000 get requests and 2,000 post requests, right? And then 15 GB of data transfer and all the information are there. If you really want to know more information about it, like how much EC2 instance, which all EC2 instance application you'll be able to get it as a free one, which tire you'll be able to get it, Anyhow, I will be showing you all those things in my videos. I'll make sure that none of your money is deducted. Initially, only when you are actually connecting with AWS or creating your account there, you have to, in the billing dashboard, you have to put your payment methodology so that a minor charge of one rupee or two rupee INR will be deducted just to verify your debit card or credit card is, uh, you know, it is not fake. Other than that, guys, Please make sure that just don't use any of the services just like that without having any knowledge. Otherwise, suddenly some money will get deducted and you'll not come to know. And there are a lot of free tire services. If you go to this AWS free tire, here you'll be able to find out what all things are free, how much, like in this particular case, you can see this, right? For in the case of free tire for 12 months, you'll be able to see Amazon EC2 instance for 750 hours per month. Uh, in case of Amazon S3, you'll be able to get 5 GB, then uh, Amazon RDS, you'll be able to get 750 hours. Databases like Amazon DynamoDB. DynamoDB, DynamoDB is just like a NoSQL pro database that is provided by AWS itself. You can also use this. SageMaker also, you'll be able to use it for two months. But understand there are some services internally that are used by SageMaker that may just charge you some amount of money. So you have to be very, very careful when you are doing it. I, I will guide you with respect to each and everything. Don't worry. You know, and as soon as we practice things, we'll make sure that we'll also delete uh, those so that uh, none of the money money goes over there. Then you also have with respect to AWS Lambda, AWS Amazon Lightstail and all. So here, what all things I'm going to cover in this entire playlist is that we'll try to understand about AWS EC2 instance, S3 bucket, how do we code it, what is IAM, and then what is DynamoDB, SageMaker, Lambda. SageMaker is already being created over here. I'll still more continue and create more videos regarding that. And then we'll try to understand about IAM, identify uh, identify and access management. So first of all, let's go ahead. And again, guys, this link will also be given. Apart from that, if you search for AWS free tire, you'll be able to get it, okay? So all this information is there. Uh, <clears throat> in today's topic, I'll just give you or guide you how do you sign into the console, how to create an account. And then we'll probably have a look onto the brief introduction about S3 bucket, okay? So that is the first thing that we'll start with. Now, first of all, just go and in the Google, you just have to go and search for AWS console login, right? So when you search this, you'll be getting the first link over here. Click on this. Why I'm taking this particular series? Because this there was a lot of requests from many of you regarding AWS and it is becoming pretty much popular because the abundant number of services that it provides is just very, very handy. It is being used by various company. My previous company also used to use this. I've worked in both uh, AWS and Azure, but when I compare both of them, I like AWS a lot because it is quite easy, okay? Now, once I click this, now I'll sign into the console. Now, once I sign into the console over here, you'll be able to see that uh, probably it is asking me my email ID and my password 
if uh, you uh, you are joined for the first time make sure that you sign up and now currently I'm just signing in because I have already created an account okay so if you are new to this just make a sign up guys okay so suppose if I search for AWS console login okay and then if I go over here uh, probably there will be a sign up button mm, okay when you're going to the sign in probably I think here only you'll be able to find it out let me just sign out okay I think it will be somewhere here only okay otherwise I'll just search in the Google okay a w Amazon um, AWS console sign up sign up for free I think I missed it in the starting time only so here it is account AWS mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, my account uh, account setting this 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 is there so as soon as you probably you click on sign into the console or uh, you will be having sign into a different account so here it is just try to click on sign into a different account and um, probably it will take some time I don't know why and then you have an option of create a new AWS account <laughs> it is not coming in my screen because I was just using uh, with the help of my name so because of that I think it was happening like that right so I'm just going to go back uh, quickly and then I'm just going to sign in over here now once I sign in you'll be able to see this is the entire dashboard of AWS so like this you'll be getting AWS services all services everything remember they are abundant services you cannot just use all the services nobody can be perfect in all the services so uh, we will be starting with some of the services and with, as we go ahead uh, which all are the most important services we'll try to run that which are the free services we'll try to run all those things so first of all as I said that if you really want to search for any services just click over here on services here you'll be able to get every services you can find out every information over here with respect to every other thing like suppose if you know about uh, EC2 so you can also search for EC2 like this you'll be able to get right it is a virtual server in cloud suppose you want to uh, understand about S3 right so here you'll be able to see it now first thing as soon as you log in the next thing that you have to do is basically go to your billing dashboard so go to this username and go and select your billing dashboard and this billing dashboard here there is something called as payment methods you have to click over here guys and it is compulsory to put a debit card and credit card or a credit card remember for the first time it will charge you one rupee or two rupee I not just to confirm your other card is correct or not uh, after that whatever we'll do will 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 do in such a way that none of the money is basically charged from your account so after this uh, you click on payment method add your payment method and just uh, proceed with it okay so once it get it gets verified just go over here now uh, the first three first first thing that we are going to do will we'll understand what all things are there in this particular dashboard here you can see that these all are your different different regions uh, you can select one of the region and probably work on that uh, <clears throat> remember one thing guys whenever you are selecting the regions uh, uh, it is said that this regions should be selected based on the services that we are using okay probably uh, suppose if you are using Alexa services okay Alexa services is also provided by AWS at that time uh, AWS people say that you have to basically select Ireland because from there to India suppose if I'm working from India the response time will be quite less similarly if you are probably using any services from India itself you may also select Mumbai you know so that you'll be able to get the response these regions are the places where all your servers different different servers are basically uh, uh, allocated over there your AWS services are running and you'll be able to use those services right so this is the first thing the second thing is that you'll be able to see your account information and all remember guys this account information is basically the information of the root user okay root user from this I can provide access to different different users to admins to to developers that all I'll show probably in the upcoming video where we'll be discussing about IAM so let me first of all go with respect to the first service that we are going to discuss which is called as S3 okay so I'm going to select on S3 <clears throat> now if you don't know about S3 S3 is just like uh, you can consider that simple storage device oh sorry simple storage services so we have simple storage service so we write it as S3 they have given the terminology like that and here you will be able to create files buckets you know like suppose I have created buckets over here with the name of Chris test one 
Now inside this, I have different different files like CSV file, it may be an image file, it may be a video file. So we can store any kind of file and we can store uh, in such a way that we don't have any any problems with respect to the size and all. We can store any kind of size, any amount of files inside this. Right now for the free version, we have 5 GB storage space available that are completely for free for at least one year. Okay, so here you can store any kind of files. So this becomes just like a big data Hadoop where we can basically store anything as such. Uh, remember in the real world scenario, whenever you're working with uh, any live streaming data, right? Like IoT diagnostic data and all, companies who are using AWS S3, they will be able to store all the information over here. Now, what are the advantages of S3? What are the advantages of S3 guys? If I just search for AWS S3, <clears throat> charges suppose so suppose this is the entire information or the pricing you see that what they have basically written right uh, first of all this pricing is very very cheap if you are using this s3 standard version i'll show you how to basically go ahead with this and all and this is also based on the region right now i'm in north virginia we saw that right uh, suppose if i'm going and creating some of the files in us east north virginia at that time you're Pricing is something like this. First TB per month is it is somewhere around 0 0.023 per GB, right? Then as you go on increasing the size, your price will be decreasing, right? If you are just using this S3 standard, but as you all know that for a free version for a first the first user, uh, first uh, 5 GB will be free, and after that only the charges will happen if you are using this S3 standard. If you are going with something else, then here you have different different prices. And similarly, companies who are creating diagnostic data, they will be going ahead with S3 glaciers, they'll be going with S3 glacier deep archive. So they are different, different versions of S3 bucket, S3 plans also. Okay, so that you should be knowing. And these all things right now you don't have to care about because when you will be working in a huge project where you are getting a lot of live stream data, that time you have to understand that which one, which plan you have to go ahead with. Okay, apart from this, uh, there are some more information regarding this. See, in AWS free tire, you can start with S Amazon S3 for free. In this, you will basically be able to get 20,000 GET requests. You will be able to do at a time 20,000 GET requests, 20,000, 2,000 PUT requests. That is just like a post. Uh, you can also, with the help of code, you can store information in S3 also. I'll be showing you that probably in my next video. But here, I'll just try to show you how to create files and all. Uh, that all things will try to understand. Okay. And uh, you can also see, you can do 2000 put, copy, post, list, request, 15 GB of data transfer out each month from one year, for one year. So this is one uh, more additional things and you can use all this particular feature. So let me go back to my S3 bucket. Now suppose, how does S3 bucket work, okay? As I said that guys, first of all, always remember, if you really want to upload anything, first of all, in S3 bucket, we create something called as buckets, okay? Buckets. So we create something called as bucket. Here I give my bucket name, suppose like test one. Remember what region I'm actually selecting. Here I have selected e US uh, East OYO, US East 2. Remember this region that I'm selecting is also pretty much important because when I am doing the coding, I have to give this particular region name. Uh, suppose from my Jupyter notebook, I want to access this particular S3 bucket, read some CSV file, then actually prepare my model and do some of the pre-processing and training in my data science uh, project. At that time, I really have to give this region name. Then uh, there is also something called as block all public access. I don't want to give this, but uh, here, uh, this is called as bucket versioning. Why bucket versioning is used? I'll just tell you. If I enable this and if I probably create a bucket, see, you can also do server side encryption. You can also enable it right now. We'll discuss about this server side encryption later on, but just understand when we are doing this bucket versioning, if we enable it here, we are basically going to create a bucket. Okay. Uh, it says test one is already there. Okay. Let me, okay. I cannot AWS. Okay. So I'm just created a bucket name called as uh, Chris AWS. Again, it is showing me error. Let's see. Okay. Chris AWS one. I have actually created the bucket. So once I created the bucket inside this, so here you'll be able to see this is my bucket. Okay. Now I can upload the file inside this. So now let me just show you how we can upload the file. I will click on upload button. I'll say add files. Suppose I want to add this particular image. And as I said you that we can upload anything. And remember, as soon as I upload this particular uh, image, you'll be able to see the destination path will be something like this. 
how we'll be using the destination path and all i'll show you when i'm doing the coding this is just the introduction video and after this i'll just upload it now once i'm uploading it guys uh, it is somewhere around 156.9 kb it has got uploaded perfectly now let me go back to my s3 okay so i'll click on s3 and let's see whether the file has got uploaded or not so here when i go to krish aws1 here you'll be able to see that the file has got uploaded now this is very much important what if i'll tell you what is the importance of versioning please see to this if i try to upload the same file again if i try to upload the same file i think it was capture one right uh, i hope it was capture one so capture one i'll just try to upload it again now you can see that it is pending now it is in progress and it is successful now i'll go to my s3 bucket and now let's see whether the same file will it get uploaded twice or what will happen just see over here okay sorry i uploaded capture one and capture two let me upload the same file again i just wanted to show you what is versioning okay so i'm trying to upload capture one again and then probably i'll upload it over here and after i upload it i'll just go back to my s3 bucket remember this this s3 is very very important for my model training and all if i have any csv files i can store it over there versioning is there what is versioning i'm just trying to explain it over here now see this guys i have this capture one okay now i'll go to this permission okay uh permission access point sorry uh, so i okay just a second okay let me click on this capture one in this capture one since i have uploaded it two times here you can see in the version in the version also it keeps a record of that it keeps a track of that now why this is important just imagine that i'm training a specific model and when we do the retraining approach again that same model will be created again right in this particular scenario when we create the same model again with the same name aws make sure that it does not delete the previous version it will keep the version of the previous model so that if something wrong happens if by mistakenly something happens we can revert it as soon as possible okay we can also revert it see there are something like actions also you can download it you can do a lot of things right so this is basically making different different versions of the same file so that the previous one is not lost and you will be able to use it if by mistake you have even uh, deleted uploaded or done something right so this is very very much important to basically understand and this is how you have to basically create like suppose first of all i told you that whenever you are working in s3 first of all you have to go ahead with uh, the bucket name the bucket name with respect to the bucket name you have to select a region and from that particular region only you will be able to access it if you are trying to create an instance other than that if you really want to access it from outside i uh, that also you can do it and probably i'll show that in your coding mechanism like how to do it you'll be having an access key and password and you'll be able to do it but remember one thing inside buckets your files will be uploaded you can also have multiple folders inside this like you can also add like folders right and after you add folders you will probably be able to see that um, with the help of folder structuring also you can also upload this particular file right so i hope you got a basic idea about s3 please make sure that you do this much this is just for the tutorial one to make you understand about the basic functionality of s3 now the next thing in the next tutorial we will try to find out how do we access the s3 bucket we can do it from our account also from a specific instance also and from normal coding with the help of boto3 library so this is the boto3 library which i'll be already be taking in the next class so uh, i hope you like this particular video um please do subscribe the channel and yes guys this series is going to be big because we are going to discuss about cloud computing and we are trying to see how we can use various services that are provided by aws so i hope you like this particular video i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you and all bye bye